G'day, welcome back to the Assassin's Creed Origins walkthrough. So today what we're going to do is have a little look-see and push on with the plot and show you a few key ideas that you need or you can think about doing early in the game. So first things first, we have now run around and turned on all of the synchronization points for the whole map. Now, if you've done that, if you've gone around and done all of them, you've had some lovely runs across the desert, you've seen some sunrises, some beautiful sunsets, and you've really had a look at the effort that's gone into the creation of the world here. It's a beautiful, big world. So I want to explain a few of these little icons that have now cropped up. The first important thing is if you look at each space around in my circle there, <clears throat> it tells you a number, 37 to 40. That means you should probably be around level 37 to 40 to deal with that. Here, 6 to 8, which means any of the enemies you're going to find here are level 6 to 8, etc. That's quite helpful to know because it's pretty brutal in this game. If you're not, if you're not skilled up, you're going to get pasted. So... You would have hopefully had a chance to slide down some pyramids and climb up the Great Pyramids of Giza and they're actually pretty pretty correct in terms of the way they look and all that sort of clobber so that's particularly great. The other thing to notice is these little blue things. Little blue things with an exclamation mark usually means there's some sort of local short lasting issue that you can go and deal with. So they're good for money and experience which you need white exclamation marks are proper side quests they're really good in this game and they're really good in the next one they're, they're better than the side quests in, in a lot of rpgs and in fact many of the side quests are long involving and better than some of the the main quests worth pursuing early to get to know the game and get to know how it's all working the other kind of icon is this thing here that's a treasure that means there's some sort of treasure going on there and you can pick it up when you pick up treasure you get the treasure itself which could be a legendary weapon could be anything like that but could also just be uh, cashola which is very useful in this game and desperately necessary the other icon that we get are these little ones here that's where someone has taken a photograph um, and they've uploaded it to the internet if you know that person you can go there and you can like their photo um, and if you're online you can connect to that person and, and say you know I was there as well <clears throat> one really important icon is this thing here a papyrus now you know that the ancient Egyptians invented writing or were, certainly did a lot to push forward writing and they wrote the stuff down <clears throat> which is a lot of a lot of the way towards getting us towards books and they wrote these things on papyrus what it means in the game is if you find an old papyrus and there's about or 25 of them or something in the game <clears throat> if you find an old papyrus what it can do is take you to a you know direct you to a place where you might pick up a fantastic new little weapon so we'll have a look at those the other icons in the game um, are these ones where you've got a great big sort of spear and that's a camp a military camp um, so much like Far Cry series there's forts and camps that you can you know overtake and there'll be a few little missions to overtake the whole fort usually kill the captain a few important people loot some loot some treasures and then you own the fort you don't actually get to own it in the sense that it's yours but you do get to collect all the stuff from it that icon there is a blacksmith now blacksmiths in the game are really important and we're going to have a little look at using them to upgrade your weapons buy new weapons sell all your junk so you can get more money so you can upgrade your weapons that's a stable you can go there and you can buy horses we don't need to because we've got the the season pass thingy and it gave us a great horse but that's a nice place to go for that sort of clobber and here um, there's temples so usually if you hit a temple that's a fast travel point as well that one there is a weaver so if we have a look at if you've done what I did and you've run around and just gone to all the synchronization points you're going to get a bunch of levels you can see we're up and now at level 14 so what that means up the top if you look where it says the word map up the top of the screen 
I can go along to my abilities and I've got eight points that I can now spend because I've gone and collected them all. So I didn't actually do any of that till till um, till I got to chat to you guys. So here we go. Over in the top left hand corner, you can see that I've pretty much got most of the sync points happening. There's still a few more for me to grab, but <coughs> they have, they don't actually occur until you're, you're inside the game playing the quest line. But he's got a massive perception it's really quite substantial so that's pretty good if you have a look at the three trees i've put a lot of time and effort into the warrior tree have a look at some of these things over here pyromaniac if you want fire damage um to be doing something and smoke screen there um is a very useful little one fire bombs i don't really care too much about they are useful are they more useful than hijack Yes, they are. So I'm going to go for a firebomb and a bit of pyro and the smoke screen for the moment. After smoke screen, <clears throat> you want passive damage for smoke screen because it's very, very effective after you've had a bit of melee to knock them to the ground. Come back over here and you can see that what I want is extended combo because I've got a plus two combo on my weapon. And that's going to cost me two points. Attack and push. That's useful. Overpower. Killing enemies with an overpower gives me XP. I want that. But look down here. What do we got down here? Assassination XP. We want that one. We'll grab that. Down the bottom here, assassination loot. That's very useful. Now, the reason I'm going to get that is that it automatically collects all the loot when I kill someone. But if I come over here and have a look at the headshot... Um, headshot XP, I'm going to get extra points for that. We'll, we'll take headshot XP because we will be doing... Oh, will we? No, not necessarily super early. But we want... Uh, let's have a look at the different options we got. So we could have Arrow Retrieve, I don't want that. Bow Bear, I don't care. Eagle Harass. It's useful, it's fun, but it's not necessary yet. And over here is where I've got my dash boost. And if we look along the warrior tree here, attack and push, overpower XP, overpower combo, overpower chain throw, where you you can, after kill an enemy with an overpower attack, you can use their weapon and throw it at somebody else. That's pretty useful. Um, it costs three points to buy, though. Overpower combo. I can chain a combo of light attacks. Let's do that. And lastly, Overpower XP. We'll take that. So we, you can see we're maxing out the middle of the warrior tree here, which is pretty important because we're a warrior character. The next thing to know in this game is your gear. Now, unlike a lot of other RPGs where you can just buy, um, you know, better armor or anything like that, in this game, the armor sets that you wear, and we own all of these ones, the armor sets that you wear are all the same. The armor level happens because you upgrade down here. That's the only place that you can upgrade. So our tool pouch, obviously, and you can see to upgrade that you require particular stuff. So purple skins, that's going to be your lions, your tigers, your glamorous animals. Green skins, that's your harder, you know, more solid animals like your crocodiles and your hippopotami and stuff like that. And the little ones, the little normal leather, that's going to be your deer and your pigs and things of that nature. So I'll go through what they all do. Over here to the left, the quiver is really important. Um, I think that's, a, that's something you want to upgrade because you need to hold more arrows. You're only going to shoot six or seven of them initially, and that's nowhere near enough. If we have a look here at the bracer for melee damage, we want that too, because that's how much damage we're going to hit with our axe, so we'll upgrade that one. You can see that for the next level of that, I need more wood and more green. Over here for my breastplate, that's going to upgrade my health. And to get more of that, I need more green and more normal. And my tool pouch, which has fire bombs, I don't care too much about at the moment. 
Now this one, increased range damage, I do care about that. So we're going to upgrade that one. And you can see I don't have the ability to upgrade anything in, it's except for the tool pouch, but I want to hang on to those purples because I'm going to need them later on. Now as you upgrade further, you can see the colour of these things is blue. As you upgrade further, you're going to require more stuff. Um, and it's going to tell me, if, if you pin it up the top right hand corner there, you can see how, how close I am to having or not having all the things I need. When you look at a weapon, and I've upgraded my axe, so now my axe is, as you see in the top right hand corner there of the box, level 14, because I'm level 14. But your weapons don't automatically upgrade just because you are. You need to go to a blacksmith. So if you have a look at my bow, it's still level 1. That one's level 4, that one's level 11, but it's blue. So to go through the colours, blue is the worst kind of weapon. You can see it only has one special thing, stealth damage. Purple is the next best. They usually have two, um, and they're called rare. But the best ones are the legendary legends, and you want the legendary stuff. Now, our legendary bow up here um, is, on, is a nice one, but it's only level one. But it does do fire damage, which is particularly helpful. All right, so that, that's pretty much the rundown of how this stuff works. What we need to do is some grinding in the game. You need to go out and hunt for stuff. Now, we are up here because this is where the rest of the game is going to take off from. But if you, if you send Senu up in the sky, you can see that he's going to highlight all these resources. There's some green, they're resting. There's some wood, if I go and attack that ship I can get that wood. There's some purple, if I go and attack that ship I can I can kill those animals and get the purples. And um, over here it shows you all the ships that you can go and harass and annoy. This is to put it on the map, just to sort of let you know where it is I'm hanging out. This is Lake Mariotis. Now, in the middle of it is a little island that you've got to fast travel to. Um, you would have come if you picked up all the sink points to Lake Mariotis. If you haven't, here's where we've come from. So Siwa, uh, where's Siwa? Over here on the left, I think. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Maybe it's down here. I, um, I don't know, where's Siwa? Memphis, there's Memphis, there's Giza, and up here, Lake Mariotis, <clears throat> and it <clears throat> is a particularly good place to be a bit of a pirate. Lots and lots and lots of ships regularly for you to go and attack, and you can see they just keep coming. Um, so, if you want, and we will be, you can hang out here for a while and just collect stuff. One other thing about the lake that's important is that by the side of the lake you get a lot of animals. So you can see here there's some wood being shipped but there's some animals and there's some more animals and you get them in this game which is really lovely according to normal animal behavior. So at night time they go to sleep and in the morning they're running around. Um, and if you kill a bunch of animals and then you know save the game quit and restart it They'll, they'll be back again, you can kill them again. So if you find a nice, you know, crocodile area or hippopotamus area, you can just sort of grind away there and get your, your hard leather. What we're going to do now is show you to get weapons, to get good weapons, the way weapons work in the game, is that you pick them up or you buy them. So we've got some good weapons, but they're low level. We can buy them or pick them up. There are two other ways. To, there are several ways to get legendary weapons in this game. One is for a particular guy who sits by the side of the road and gives you little jobs to do. The other is by picking up a papyrus. So if we come over here to this blue exclamation mark, and the little meet a very important boy. But before we meet him. 
because he's going to send us on a quest. I want to show you how to get a papyrus. So you can see there's the icon of the papyrus. That we're following it straight ahead, 130 metres apparently this way. But it's still pretty confusing as to exactly where it is. So get Senu up there. Aha! And Senu will locate exactly where it is. Good work, Senu. So in we come. Now these papyri all have a little kind of, we're going to avoid that for a sec. All these little papyri have a little bit of, so it looks like it's just sitting up there, so we want to go up. There we are. And they're usually just sitting there. There it is, just sitting there. So come on in, pick it up. Fertile lands. A few hundred metres northwest of a temple, which resides here, there's a great place to go for a date. Date. Full of palm trees surrounded by a desert. One rock fence was built and closed off with no exit. So fertile lands. Now the thing about the papyri that you need to know is that first of all, you can, if you want, scour the, scour the, the map to find it. So if we have a look here, a few hundred metres. That looks like a bunch of date palms. We'll have a little look there. Um, and you can do that. There are, of course, hundreds of very useful um, internet people who have sort of worked it all out and told you how to get to these places. Um, so what we're going to do is... I'll show you what happens when you go and grab your pa 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 your pa 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 Okay, I'm I really just need to get out of this building. What's going on? Help me out. Let's get out. Because these temples of course are, you know, relatively realistic, which means you can actually just be running around inside them forever. Um it's very often just to climb your way up and out. Boom. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, and you can do this 25 times, when you go and you grab the papyrus, it's going to be a rare or a legendary. You won't know which, and you might just miss out and get lots of rares. It's random. Is 25, you are going to wind up with particularly brilliant versions of all of those. So what I'm going to do now is just head towards... A little markup. And we see there's a little oasis. Something exciting's happened in the world of Odyssey. We come to our little oasis. And there's possibly baddies here. So we're going to sneak. We'll do a bit of sneaking. Alright, so we've got a whole bunch of date palms. I happen to know that it's in here, but you come to where, you know, have a little search around. So if you find it, you can see the little sort of snow, hit loot. And I got myself the Smoke and Mirrors Predator bow, which is a particularly brilliant bow. So that was a nice little pickup. And we're definitely going to just put that on. Um, smoke and Mirrors Predator bow is a fire bow, gives you stealth damage. Um, and is a lovely bow. But that's how the papyrus work. And there, as I say, if you want, early in the game, you can just run around and now go collecting your papyrus. And, you know, most of them you can actually get to without needing to fight anybody. Um, and so that's the interesting thing about the game is that you can do tons and tons and tons of stuff, really get your character rocking before you've done any of the actual main quest line. But now that we've done that one, what I want to do really quickly is show you the other way to get a legendary weapon. Um, so we're going to come along. And of course, as you roll one, 
you're going to or R2 you're going to hit outside which means you know if, you, if you're riding past food if you're riding past a deer or something it's worth doing we're following our little blue icon there he is straight ahead 150k 150 meters he's on the other side of that and he's a lovely little character oh, we're gonna have to climb over annoying all right that's fine we'll just climb over there he is oh but now I'm definitely gonna now that I've done all my traveling around I'm gonna shift to my camel as opposed to my horse because I think it's more fun riding a camel in this game so we're gonna go for the camel at the moment there we go okay <clears throat> around the corner see the little icon now this guy this little boy here he actually ad um, changes according to your level so you can speak to him or you can interact with that if you interact with that you can just buy these you can buy carbon crystals which you need sometimes for um, Grading stuff at the very top end, or you can buy a Harker chest. Now, a Harker chest is three grand. You're going to get a rare or a legendary weapon or an item, but they're really not worth it because it just takes so long to get money in this game. So, chat to him instead. Nejai, great warrior, come. I sell you what you want. You need it, I have it. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Redda has your back in these desolate lands. You are but a boy. How did you come by such fine treasure? Locked from the ancient lands of the desert, the sunken vessels of the Nile, refined by handmaidens of the gods, weapon reforged in Nubian mines, Persian jewels, and Assyrian treasures. Well, wow. I have it all. I see. You are well traveled for such a young man. Old wisdom, Neb. I have acquired from long nights in the desert with my camel. I will see what you have. Come, look around. If you want good net, I have other jobs too. So this icon shows where Redder, the merchant, is going to be. He offers a wide variety of rare goods every day. He offers a new quest. And if you do the quest in the time limit, you'll have a good chance of... My informant was beaten and his goods... Mine, really. Taken from him. The parasite who did this is near. Do me a favour, Bayek. Deal with them slowly. Then take whatever you find as your reward. So we're going to do this quest, Stolen Goods. Oh. Because at the end of any of his quests, you're going to get a legendary weapon. Or oh, rare and legendary. <laughs> But also, they're always pretty good little quests. Now, he moves around, so he'll be there for a bit, but if you wait too long, he will have gone, and you'll have to catch him somewhere else. Now, that, that's where the advantage of having done the whole thing helps, because you'll be able to find him. So you can see now that we've got a head right out in the middle of nowhere. I'm just going to take that other click off because we don't need it there we are okay so out you go we're traveling at night why not you can cut straight through fields of beautiful flowers and it is quite peaceful and lovely just to hop on your camel and head out to the desert and have a ride When you're heading out, remember, as you would expect, groups of bandits behave like groups of bandits. So don't just ride straight into them and start swinging, because they'll hurt you. All right. Thank you, Senu. Oh, there it is. There's the thief. They're all level eight which means I've got a pretty good chance of just riding on in and causing trouble. Let's do that. And I'll show you how this cool bow works. The Predator bow is like a sniper rifle. 
it gives you that, that zoom in ability. Alright. We are going to come on in and I'm hoping I can just do a little bit of that. Take these guys out while they're asleep. And then I'm hoping... Boom! And you got to confirm the kill. You get a, a thousand XP, you get all sorts of fun stuff. And what we've picked up now is a unicorn. <laughs> we are totally going to ride the unicorn. So we've picked up a legendary mount, um, which is just ace. I have never had this one before, so let's hop in. Bye-bye, um, camel. We're riding a unicorn because you got to be kidding me. Okay, so you can see there on the left-hand side it says location objectives. Kill the captain, which we've done. Loot the treasure. There's still some treasure to loot. So come and find your treasure. Here it is in here. Oh. And we picked this in this game. There's a really nice fiery scepter that we can grab. And I'll just show you what they look like so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. Um, we're not going to use it because we've, we're going to go for big heavy weapons at the moment. But scepters are like monkey magic. Wish, 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 wish. They're fast. They're faster than um, than, and, than axes and things of that nature. But and they're particularly powerful, and they made a kind of a thud, thud noise when you hit people with them. One thing I want to now show you is another aspect of the game, which is interesting. I, I've got to ride my unicorn there. I just have to ride my unicorn. Oh, look at that. That's fabulous. Oh, it has rainbow feet. It has rainbow feet. Who doesn't love rainbow feet? All right. So just to let you see, I've got rainbow feet happening with my unicorn. There's there's her, his or her horn. Um, and if you ride down here, you can see there's a golden question mark. And very often golden question marks lead to stone circles. So we're going to do one. There are a bunch of these in the game. And you get a little reward if you do all of them. <coughs> and they will take you all across the whole of the map. My son. You wanted the stars. The stone circles show the gods' places in the sky. And your grandfather once told me they also show our place in the world. I'm going to find every stone circle, the Sphinx and the pyramids too, and I'll find my place. So there are these little reflective moments, and I do recommend running around the map picking them all up. So we pick this up. you can see that they make a shape and what you want to be doing is you want to take that shape map it onto the night sky and you can see that you can move around and you can turn the shape so your job is to sort of work out where this sh have a duty to the gods. shape might we fit strong and ready to fight we must only fight when it is just. I'll practice hard, Papa. I want to be strong and hunt like you do. You are already better with your weapons than many men. You is that going to fit there? Magi, son. Like Mum says, no. your victories multiply. Oh, that's looking good, isn't it? The Divine Lion. Take it a little homily, a little bit of wisdom, <clears throat> and 
he takes the little rock from the stone circle and he keeps it so it's actually a quest it's a long quest you have to cover the whole map of Egypt we will do all of them eventually and you get 300 XP for doing that so I'll show you what it means about quests now you go to your quest menu and you can see you got all and this is going to be a, a, a thing they, they keep for all of it you've got events you've got all of them you've got main, main quests side quests events events are things that pop up um, that are timed because of the game and main quests are as you would imagine main quests so before we come back next time what I'm going to run off and do is a whole bunch of hunting so that I can up, um, do some upgrading of my gear down here lots and lots and lots of me hanging around um, on the boat doing piracy killing animals just to get these things up and next time we join you we'll head off into the main quest okay see ya <laughs>